hi everyone and welcome back to our virtual art classes I hope you guys enjoyed last week's video and the last session um, and thank you guys for all the great feedback you gave me I will try to incorporate that feedback into this week's video so once again once you get through this activity let me know if you have any suggestions on how I can make it better and uh, that will be greatly appreciated so let's get right into it this week what we're going to do is since it's mid-November I thought it would be fitting if we uh, focus on the winter theme and we've been doing a lot of work with blending, creating skies, backgrounds and also a lot of work on painting trees so I thought we could bring all those skills together and we're going to do a nice winter landscape um, and we're going to try to still make it colorful and vibrant even though it's winter uh, so we'll keep the snow to a minimum in this painting and as always I'll be guiding you guys throughout the entire process so from drawing to mixing colors to painting to blending everything we're gonna do it together uh, so yeah let's get right into it let's do it okay so let's get set up so we're gonna need pretty much the same supplies we've been using as before we are need our paint brushes our paints uh, obviously uh, a cup for water some plates for mixing, a rag, and also a pencil. Once again, I'll be using a Sharpie so you guys can see what I'm doing. You guys will need a pencil and maybe an eraser. And that's it. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to get yourself set up, and then we're gonna get right into the art. Okay, before we start, I'm just going to quickly recap exactly what we're going to do and the process that we're going to take. So we're going to start with our drawing and what we're going to do is essentially we're going to draw this mountain line. We're going to draw the ground, where the ground is. We're going to draw this little river here and we're going to draw pretty much just the trunk of the tree. We're not going to draw the entire tree and all the branches. We're going to add that after we do our background. So the drawing portion will just be these few elements. Once we have that, we're going to work on our background, which is going to start with the sky. We'll do the snow after that. Then we will add the mountains. Then we'll add the river. And the very last thing to go is the tree. Okay, so when it comes to drawing, first thing I like to do is I like to identify a few anchor points. Kind of figure out where I'm going to have uh, the sky end and the ground begin. And then once I map those out, we can go ahead and start drawing it. So first thing I want to do is I want to find out uh, where the sky will end essentially. So this it, mark right there, this area right here, I want to be able to find this area on my paper here. So how do we do that? There's a few different ways. What I like to do is I always like to start off um, by kind of just dividing my page where I need to into halves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little mark right here that's going to represent the halfway point of my page on this vertical line here so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna translate that onto this paper right here so um, I'm gonna eyeball it basically I'm just gonna guess where halfway is and then I'm just gonna make a little mark on the tape right there so I know that's about my halfway point and now that I have that it's easier for me to find these points here this point here now that I know where my halfway is so I know that this is half my page and I know that this line is going to be just over a third of the a third of this space right here so I can take that onto this page now I know that this is my halfway point and I know if I go about a third of the way down from this space here that's going to give me the top of my mountains so this is just one way of kind of mapping out a drawing and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, okay, so I have the top of my mountains. I need the bottom of my mountain. So I can see that in reference to the rest of this space here, it's about halfway in between. So about a quarter of the page is going to give me the bottom of my mountain. 
So once again, I'll go to my page. I will have um, the halfway mark and then I'm going to come halfway to the middle of that and there we go. So we have those two areas marked down so we know that the top of our mountain, the bottom of our mountain and then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side of our page. So once again I'm going to come here, I'm going to eyeball the halfway point and then I'm going to make these marks and I can see that they're pretty much almost in the same spot except this on the right side the mountains are a little bit smaller so what I'll do is I'm gonna do the same thing I'll eyeball my halfway point it's right there and then I can come down about a third of the way there and I know this is gonna be the top of my mountain so I have my halfway point a third of the way down from that and then I can see that the thickness of my mountain on this image is going to be thinner so I'm just going to eyeball that now so instead of making it you know this looks like maybe an inch and a quarter I'm going to make it just under an inch long so now I have my four points for my horizon line and my mountain range so the, the other thing I'm going to need at this point now is to identify um, where that line goes so it's not a straight line so it's gonna dip down and I can see that the lowest point is right there I'll make a little X there so you guys can see it's right there where the river is so I want to find this point on this page so I'm not gonna make it much more of a grid now because I can kind of eyeball it I know that this point is lower than this line that we have and it's lower than that line that we have so very simply I can just kind of come and just come a little bit lower than those two lines and I know that it's about halfway maybe a little bit to the right of halfway so if this is my halfway point it's gonna be right a little bit to the right of that so I'll just make up a halfway point and then it's gonna be just a little bit to the right of this so I'm gonna place my finger here work my way up I can see that this is yes a little bit to the left of my halfway point and a little bit below that line that I made and I can say okay that is where the top of the river is going to be and that's going to be the lowest part of the mountain so now I have my marks I have my lines the rest of it I can just improvise and freestyle let's go right for it uh, I'm gonna come start at this point starting from the left side I'm gonna kind of swoop down a little bit curve my line down and up and then meet at this point and now I can see as it comes back up it kind of has a few curves here a little bit of a slightly more dramatic up turn and voila there we go now I have the bottom line so this is where the snow is and that's where the snow meets the mountains now that I have that, I can draw the top of my mountain line. And you know what? We'll try this technique here because I can see that it, I can see the outline of the mountains. So I'm going to actually just kind of draw it like that. So instead of just drawing a straight line across, I'm going to draw separate mountains. So what I'm going to do, I'll do the first two. So basically, I'm going to start at that same point. But instead of going all the way across, I'm just going to dip down at some point and in, inter, intersect with the lower line that we have and that gives us the shape of a mountain and we're just going to layer shapes of mountains on top of each other so we'll start with this one I'm going to start at the top of my mountain line I'm going to kind of curve up a little bit curve down a little bit curve up a little bit and then come down and meet that bottom line there and I have the shape of a mountain and now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do it one more time now the key is don't start again at that tip come a little bit lower down so I'm gonna start there now I'm gonna do a more smooth curve for this one give it a little dip and then same thing come back down and as you can see I'm creating that sort of texture that line um, that can represent the top of a mountain range right so same thing let's go another one there's one two three I guess there's four all together. There's four more. So one, two, three, four, five, six little shapes. Okay. So let's just go for it. Uh, 
this is where you can add your own little bit of creativity so if you want to make one hill bigger make one hill smaller go for it so once again I don't start right at the top here I'm gonna come further down this mountain is in front of the mountain that I'm about to create so that's why I kind of start a little bit lower create that curve go in same thing one more time do a little bit of a different curve and then for the final one um, the final one is behind this one that we just painted so I'm gonna start from this edge and just kind of make a little swiggly line and that's it so now I have my mountain lines and the reason the good thing is that we separated the mountains is that when we go to paint it we can see where the separation is so we can paint, paint them all slightly different shades and that will help us create that separation So great, so we did that. Now that we're still in the bottom section, why don't we just go ahead and just fill in this river quickly. So with the river, I already have the mark for where the left side of the bottom of the river is. That's my halfway point. So I just need to find out where the right side of the bottom of the river is on my page. Very simply, it's just about an inch and a half away from the left side. So just make a little mark right there. And I already have the top of my river over there. And now all I need to do is create a curved line to connect these three. So what I'm going to do is I'll try to add a little bit more perspective. So what I'll do is I'm going to come out to the left. Then I'm going to do a curve. And I'm going to come back out down to the left. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm going to try to create some perspective by making the top smaller and narrower and making the bottom wider that allows me to create that perspective because remember the closer something is to us the bigger it is the further away it is the smaller it is but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the contours of this line but as I work my way up I'm gonna narrow that gap in between the two so watch I'm gonna come narrow that gap and bam so it's just a funny looking shape but that once we paint it will give us that perspective okay so once again i'm following the contours of this line but i'm shrinking the space in between as i go so there we go now we have our river All right, and now the final step in our drawing is gonna be the tree trunk. So I already kind of went and painted the mountains, that's fine. We're just basically gonna identify uh, where the bottom of our tree trunk is. So those two marks I just made, the left and the right side. And then we're just gonna kind of eyeball how far we're gonna go. Obviously, like I said, we're not gonna paint the whole tree, we're just gonna do the trunk. So I'll just come up to here where uh, the branches start splitting up. And then do the same thing, kind of identify where the left side and the right side are. Once I have these four, I can just create the lines. So let's start with the bottom of the tree. It's very simple. I can kind of just eyeball it. I know that those spots is right below um, our line for the bottom of the mountain. So I can just come from there and just work my way down a little bit. And I also know it's pretty close to the left side of the page. And I know it's going to be a little bit wider than our river or about as wide as our river. So I will just kind of go ahead. I'm going to make a little mark here. That's going to be the left side or the bottom of the tree. And I'll make another mark here about inch and a half away. That's going to be the right side of our tree. Now that we have that, we're going to do the same thing for the top of our trunk. And once again, I can see that I'm going to be below my halfway point. So be somewhere in this area right there 
and I can see these lines are pretty much aligned with the bottom lines that I, uh, these points are aligned with the bottom points that I have but they're just shifted slightly to the right so I'll just do the same thing I'll start from here I'll kind of come up and then just shift a little bit to the right same thing here come up and just shift a little bit to the right and now I have my four points one two three four and that will give me uh, the basic shape of my tree trunk but remember nothing in straight in nothing in straight nothing in uh, nature is a straight line so we always want to make sure we curve our lines okay so once again I'm gonna start with the left side I'm gonna curve to the right make a little curve make a little curve and then come up and then same thing here I'm gonna curve in a little bit curve a little bit and then come up okay so it should look a little wonky if it does that's good that's nature and then we're just going to connect the bottom. I'm going to give it a little bit of a bump here to show that there's some roots that are kind of covered by the snow. And great. So that's all I'm going to do for the tree trunk. Tree trunk. We're going to leave the top open. And uh, now that you're done drawing this, you can take your eraser and just kind of get rid of these mountain lines. I'm quickly just going to touch that up with some white paint so that we can see it. And that's it for the drawing. So you guys erase this. I'm going to cover it up in white and we can start painting. So take a few minutes and finish that off. And then we're going to get right into the painting. So let me quickly touch this up. That's why pencil is always great because you can always erase it so but I'm just going to use a little bit of white paint for now and there we go we should be able to see that now our drawing is done let's start painting So for our first three colors, we will be using yellow, red, and white. We don't need that much red, uh, mostly yellow and a little bit of white. So go ahead, take a minute and get your paints on your palette. So to start, we're going to start creating the gradient in our sky. So we're going to start with our yellow and we're going to work our way up to orange and then we're going to work our way up to red and so forth. So I like to start at the bottom of the mountains. We always start with the lightest color, which in this case will be yellow. And we're going to work our way up to about the halfway point right there. And once we get to that point, then we're going to set up our next gradient. So let's get started. First thing, move some yellow onto a different section of your plate. And then we're going to add a tiny bit of white. The reason we add the white is because yellow is very transparent. So we add the white to make it more opaque. And once you have your color, so it's just basically yellow with a little bit of white, we're going to start painting. So I like to put my brush on the tip of where I'm starting and press gently from there. So I'm gonna start from the edge of the trees and work my way around the mountain tops. Um, this is the first color we're putting on so we don't need to be super careful with our edges and our lines. 
but it's always good practice uh, as we use our brush to make sure that we're staying within the lines and controlling our paint. So let's go ahead. We're just going to create about an inch or two of just yellow, a yellow strip that's going to go down uh, across our painting. So let's go ahead, take a minute and do that. Okay. And yeah, just about an inch, not too much. And once we have that yellow, just smooth it out, make sure everything's good. And then we're gonna get to our next color. So take a minute and just finish that up. So now we're going to start with our next color, which is going to be a very, very yellowish orange. And the way we do that is if you already have some of that yellow left with the white in it, we're just going to add a little bit of red to that. If you don't, just add a little, move away, move some yellow onto a different part of your palette and then add a little bit of white. And then with the red, as you can see, it's very little at a time. Remember, <clears throat> red is stronger than yellow. So if you want to make sure just a little bit at a time, I'm going to put a little bit on here just to test it out and see how it looks. I want it to be slightly, slightly different. Um, and let's see if that's good. Yeah, that's okay. That works for me. So that's the color I'm going to go with. Same thing for you guys. When you're mixing that color, make sure that it's not too different. It should be one shit step above our yellow. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll give you guys a minute to mix your color and add your next strip. Now, once you've done that, the key is to do the blending. So remember, <clears throat> in order to blend, we need two white colors that we can mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and just touch up and add a little bit more of that yellow underneath that line. So I'm just gonna go with my brush with just that original yellow and just <clears throat> work it in where those two colors meet. And by just moving my brush back and forth, you can see I'm kind of getting getting rid of that line in between them and blending them smoothly. So you're going to need your original yellow for this and you're going to need the new yellow orange that you mixed and you just want to don't overdo it. Don't go too far when you're blending just a little bit on that line. And then once you're done, the key thing is knowing when to stop. So I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow there. But once I have that color, I want to make sure I stop. That's really the key. So I'll let you guys take a minute and just finish that up and then we're going to get on to the next color. So I'm just going to keep working this in a little bit. <clears throat> and there we go. I'm good with that. It's a nice smooth blend and that bottom section where we just painted, we're not going to touch this anymore. So our next blend we're only going to touch the top of that orange and the rest of those colors we're not going to touch anymore because we have the perfect blend that we want. If you start touching it more and start messing around with it, we can mix it up. So let's mix our next color. So basically, we're just going to keep adding red to that color that we have. So if you ran out of that color that you had, that orange that you had, just uh, start again. Take some yellow, add a little bit of white, and then add a little bit more red. So I already had some left over. I added a tiny bit of red to it. And now I'm just gonna see how that looks and see if that's the color that I want. I'm putting it on my paper and yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Um, it's a little bit 
more orangish, but not enough, which is good. This is what I want. It creates that blend. And I'm just gonna paint over the tree trunk a little bit too, and that's fine. Now, if I wanna, if I saw there's a little bit too much orange there and I wanna add some more yellow, I'm just gonna mix some of that yellow again, just basically yellow and white, and then apply that wherever it needs touch-ups. But by this stage, you should have about the first three inches of your sky painted, and it should just be going from a very nice pure yellow to a very light yellow orange so i'll give everybody a minute to finish that off and then we'll jump into the next color Okay, so for the next color, make sure you clean your brush. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep adding red. That's all we're doing at this stage. So I have some of that yellow or that orange left. If you don't, once again, mix it. Uh, it's a yellow and a little bit of white and a little bit of red. <clears throat> I already have some of that orange. So all I'm gonna do, once again, just keep adding red. As you can notice, I'm adding a tiny, tiny bit at a time. I'm not overdoing it. Um, and I just want this to yeah there we go now that looks like a little bit more on the orange side which is what I want so <clears throat> once we have that color we'll go ahead and just paint a nice one inch strip above where we just painted our last color and one thing you want to remember when it comes to blending is that you want to do it fairly quickly because the paint will dry and once it dries, you have to like mix that color again and put it on the paper and then do the blend. So I just added that one inch of my new color and now I'm just going, I have some of my old color left, the lighter orange, it's on my palette still. So once I added that one inch of my new orange, I'm just gonna go and take some of my lighter orange and just smooth it out and blend it and get rid of any of those harsh lines. And that's it. So it's really the same technique that we're using over and over again. Okay, let's get into the next color. So basically I just added, I'm adding more red. That's all I'm doing at this stage. Soon I'm gonna start transitioning and adding some white, but at this stage I just wanna add more red and get that color to be more orange. And yeah, that's good. So I have a slightly more orangish red and I'm just gonna add that paint. Okay, so we're just gonna keep blending, blending. So we're still going from orange, uh, from yellow to orange. And as we're, now we're about halfway. This is kind of the halfway mark. I'm gonna make a little line here. So we're about halfway. This is where I wanna kind of start transitioning from the red color uh, into the blue and purple color. So now we're gonna step up our gradient and make it a little bit more dramatic. So what I'm gonna do is just add more red now. So I'm actually using a lot more red. I'm gonna add more red, uh, a bunch more red, a little bit of white, and then I'm just gonna mix it into that yellow. So um, before our ratio was a lot of yellow, a little bit of red. Now it's gonna be almost kind of even. So about half red, half yellow, and a little bit of white. And now we get this kind of nice fiery orange color. And as you can see, this is a big step up from the rest of the gradients that we did. So I'm gonna show you guys a different way of blending now. So I just took that red, I put it on there, and all I'm doing now is I just wet my brush, I wash the paint off, and with a little bit of water on my brush, I'm just gonna take that red and just, just work it, just smooth out that edge. Um, and the reason I can do this now is because the paint underneath, there's paint underneath that, the orange is underneath it. So I can just basically paint my red, then once I have that line, I can just take my brush, clean my brush, wash it, and then take uh, a clean brush with a little bit of water and just work on that line where the orange meets the, where the reddish orange meets the yellowish orange. And by just moving my brush back and forth, you can see I'm just smoothing it out a little bit getting rid of any of those harsh lines 
and creating a smooth gradient. So I'm done that, I'll give you guys a minute to finish it and then we're gonna jump to the next color. So now I, I'm gonna mix this new color. It's gonna be uh, the same color I just had, a reddish orange, but I'm adding a bunch of white to it now. And I'm just starting to lighten up my sky now. Add an inch of that. And then what we're gonna do is once you have that, same technique, we can blend it out. There's two ways to do it. We can do it with just uh, cleaning our brush and uh, just going over that new light color or if you have some of our old red bring that old red put it underneath that line and just keep brushing away blending away so i'll give you guys a minute to finish that and then we're going to jump into adding our blues So now we're up to our blues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my palette and a little bit more white. I need some more white. So I'll let you guys do that. So add some blue and add some white. And we should already have some red. If you add a red, add some more red. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing into the colors that I already had. So I already have my uh lightish red so now i'm going to start transitioning to a lightish bluish color so i'm going to add a lot more white now i'm going to mix all that in and it's going to give me a pink color and i'm going to take this pink color now i'm going to add one more strip um because we want to lighten it up before we go to the blue so i'm just going to go ahead and just paint another strip of that new color now which is like a lightish pinkish with a little tint of orange. And then uh, we're gonna paint that strip and then we're gonna blend it. So you see that harsh line that's up there? So how do I blend that? I take my previous color that I just used, I add the, some to the bottom, I take my new color, I add some to the top, and then there we go, that's the blend. So now we're going to jump into adding some blue to this. So I'm going to add very little at a time. Um, blue once again is stronger so I don't know how it's going to mix with this color right now. I do have some yellow in there as well with the red so it might make it a little bit um, kind of more brownish or muddy. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of blue at a time and just see if I can get a color that works for this. So. That is okay, but I think I want to add a little bit more blue. So let's add a little bit more blue. I'm going to add a little bit more red. It just felt like it was getting too grayish. Um, so I'm just adding some more red and some blue. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks a little bit more red. Let's add some more red. I don't want to lose uh, that vibrancy of the colors. So that's why I'm just adding more red and blue right now to give me more of a purpley hue because it's starting to look kind of um, more a little muted so adding a little bit more red now that I have that color okay that's a good color I'm happy with that so if you guys go ahead and mix that color and then once you've done that you're just gonna paint a one inch strip again and then 
right now the blending technique that I'm using once again is I'm just wetting my brush I'm cleaning it I'm putting a little bit of water on it and I'm just working and smoothing out that new paint that new color until it's good so give you guys a minute to do that and then we'll jump to the next one Okay, so now we're just gonna keep going with the blue. We're just gonna keep adding a little bit more blue at a time. And we're, we want that color to start looking more purpley. And uh, it looks a little gray once again, but I think what I'm gonna do is let me add some white and blue to that as, again. So it looked a little too gray, so I added more white and more blue. And I want it to look a little bit there. Yeah, that looks better. Maybe more white. And this is always the key. When you're mixing colors, you always want to put a little bit on your page and just see how that looks with the rest of the colors. So the first few were looking a little dark, a little gray. So I just added a more white to it, a little bit more blue. And I think that's good. So I'm going to put that one inch strip. And then once again for the blending, I'm bringing in a little bit of that previous color I just used and just using that to blend the two together. So always remember if you have too much paint on your brush and you're trying to blend and it's, it's, uh, oops, it's not a smooth blend, um, just, uh, just make sure your brush is clean. Wash it off and use a clean brush with a little bit of water and just work it in that way. So there we go. So I'll give you guys a minute to do that now. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into more blue. So we're just adding more blue as we go. Um, and there we go, I like that color, that looks good. I'm kind of doing this a little quick now when I'm painting it because um, I don't want my paints to dry up, it just makes it easier to blend. So I just quickly did that blue. So I'll give you guys a minute, mix your blue, mix a nice light blue, and then we're gonna add an inch of that above the previous color as we did before. And then once we're done that, we add the color to the page, we're just gonna blend. Same thing, you can use a few different techniques at this point. Um, you can just add some water to your paint and just kind of brush off that edge a little bit, work in that edge, or you can bring in your previous color and go that way. So I'll give you guys a minute, just go ahead and finish up the blue. And we have two more gradients and we're done the sky. Okay, so for the next one, what I'm doing now is adding more blue. That's it, pretty much that's all we're gonna do uh, until the very last gradient. So just adding more blue now. Now you can see the sky is starting to get a little darker. Um, and the whole idea of this is we wanna show either a sunset or a sunrise. So um, the sky is lighter in the horizon and darker as you go further up. So now we have that blue, so same thing. This is a, it shouldn't be a hard, blend at this point once you have that blue uh, put it on an inch and then just work your brush across uh, if you have some of that previous color you can blend that and mix that in there but yeah just take a minute and now move to the blue
Okay, so now we're gonna get to our final color of the sky. I'm actually gonna add black now. So I wanna darken up the last gradient. Um, and I'm gonna add some black, literally a drop of black. That's all I need. I don't need too much. Black is very strong, so it's gonna really change that color. So I added a little drop of black and you can see right away it gives me a nice darker blue color, dark grayish blue, which is good. That's what I want. So we'll do we'll do two steps. So uh, depending on how much room you have on your painting, um, on your sky left. So I'm gonna do a little strip of that new dark blue. And for mix, mixing it, for uh, blending it, I just clean my brush, added some water, and then just before that new dark blue dries, I'm just going back and forth on that line, back and forth on that line, and it should just help create that blend. I have some of my old blue left, so I'm gonna bring some of that in as well. Take some of that new dark blue, mix that in there. So by now you guys should kind of have an idea of how the blending goes. So let's go ahead and finish that off, and then we're gonna move into our last blend for the sky. So for this, we're just gonna add more black. That's it, just add a little bit more black this time. We want it to get kind of dark at this point. Um, and that's perfect, that's a perfect color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just fill in the rest of my sky with that dark bluish black color. And once I'm done that, I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I've been doing this entire time and just kind of smooth it out and blend it in. If your previous color is still wet, you should just be able to blend. If not, then clean your brush and uh, work that line in. So now we should have our entire sky. It should be a nice smooth blend from bottom to top. Um, I would also suggest even if there's a spot that you want to touch up when I'm doing here, don't do it don't touch anything up just leave it because once you created that blend it's so hard to uh, get match the colors again and get like do any touch-ups you pretty much have to do the blend over again so if there's a few spots in your painting where you know the blend isn't perfectly smooth that's fine it's cool don't worry about it we have our blend and we're gonna move on so let's move on to the next section I'll give you guys a few more minutes just to finish this up and we'll get going. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're gonna work on our snow. So we're gonna need a lot of white, obviously. I'm gonna put two blobs of white here. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't wanna get all the white mixed in yet. I wanna keep some white. Uh, so I separated my white into two blobs. I need a little bit of blue, not too much, and um, a tiny, tiny bit of black. So white, blue, and black. And once again, a little bit of black, just a few drops. Okay, so get that ready and we'll get. First thing I want to do is because I can see most of my background is a very light off-white essentially it's a snow color so what I want to do is I'm gonna fill in the whole background with that really light off-white color and then I'll come in and add in uh, the shadows and all that later on so I'm gonna take a tiny 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 bit of blue very very little like a pin drop of blue and I'm gonna mix that right into my white 
I want this color, like I said, I want it to be off-white, so when I paint it, you might not even see it on the camera, but um, you guys will be able to tell when you're doing it. It should be just lightly one shade, it's off-white, so one shade away from white, and right now it looks like I'm painting invisible, but I'm going to add a tiny bit more blue, let's add a little bit more blue to that. And still, it should be super light. If you make this too dark, then it's not going to look like snow. It's going to look like water or whatever. So I want it to be really light, light white. Uh, sorry, light, light blue. And that's good. Like I said, you guys can't really tell the color because it's so subtle on the camera. But when you're doing it in real life, you'll be able to notice a very slight difference. So once you have that, just go ahead and paint the entire bottom section minus the river there. Uh, in that color and work around the tree trunk here and yeah just fill in both these shapes with just that light blue And by now, we really, you know, we should have a good feel for the brush. We should have a feel for the paint. Um, so, there we go. Okay, so now we're done that. So what we want to do is now we're going to add those shadows, those darker areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a little bit of white. I'm going to add a little bit more blue this time. I want it a little bit darker, not too much. And a tiny, tiny bit of black, very little. So I want to get, still should be a very light blue, a little muted. But it should still be very light. But if you put some on the page on the color that we just painted you should be able to notice the difference let me give you guys a minute get your paint set up get your palette ready so I'm gonna do a dry brush technique actually. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flick my brush a little bit, separate those bristles just a little bit, and I'm just gonna do these light dabs. There should be very little paint on your brush at this point. You're just doing these really light dabs with the blue. Now I'm bringing in some white again to kind of go around that, some of my original white to start blending that in a little bit. But I just wanna do very light dabs with a little tiny bit of paint on my brush if you have too much paint on your brush you're going to create this big streak so that's not what we're going for we're going for texture so we want we just basically want to make our snow look a little dirty we just want to add some dark areas to our snow so i did the left side uh, the right side and we do the left side i'm just creating these kind of like like little shapes or little shadows with that blue and then I'm bringing in um, some of that white off-white and just kind of blending it in I don't want it to be too strong I don't want it to look like um, it's any object it's just gonna be shadows and dirt and stuff like that so make sure that it's not too much it's not too different um, and that the, the the new blue that you're adding on top of your off-white um, doesn't have any harsh lines so that's why I'm blending it in you can see I'm that, that first line I put was a little harsh, so I just took some more white and just taking white and just go over with everything with a little bit of white can really blend it up. So now let's move to the tree trunk. There's a little shadow from there. It goes diagonally to the left and off the page. So I'm just gonna kind of draw that in, paint that in with my blue. It's not like a full shadow. It's kind of half cut off, so I'll do that. And then once again, I'm gonna bring in that off-white and start blending that in. I don't want any kind of hard edges there really. So once you start, once you add your blue, then bring in your off-white and just do your blending. 
and everything should be very smooth it should be very uh, faint and subtle and no uh, like harsh blue streaks or lines a little bit different than what we did when we did uh, water and waves um, so and just gonna touch up that corner a little bit add a little bit more blue there and then just add some more white and as you can see it's starting to give my snow a little bit of texture so it's not just uh, painting snow is obviously hard because it's white but um, just adding a little bit of that texture and just using that darker color adds that texture now it looks like snow So for our river, we're going to just mix a little bit of a darker blue. So um, I just added more blue, more black to that color that I already had. But if you don't have that color, what you want to do is about um, two parts white, one part blue, and a tiny bit of black once again. So one part, two parts white, one part blue, a tiny bit of black. And that's good. That's the color that is gonna work for me so you can see it's obviously much different than the snow um, so that's perfect that's all I want and now let's uh, paint that in and just be really careful around your edges now because we're not gonna be touching the snow again so these are the lines that we really want to take our time and just make sure we have nice smooth edges so go ahead and take a minute and just fill in the river Now, once you're done filling in the river, I want to also give the river a little bit of texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that blue I just used and I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. And I'm just going to create these like little dabs and these little streaks <clears throat> so that it's not just a, you know, flat, solid blob of blue. So that it looks like it's moving or it has, it looks like nature, it adds a little bit of texture. So I just add a little bit of, uh, uh, I took my blue, added it to some white to create a slightly lower um, shade of that color, a, light, a lighter shade of that color. And then I just dabbed it in, dabbed it in, and, and then once you have it, just blend it in a little bit. <clears throat> Do some small dabs with your, um, your dark blue and the lighter color you just mixed. And just try to create a little bit of texture there. I want to give it a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a border. Um, it feels like it's a little flat still. So what I'm going to do is let's take that blue that we just used and we're going to just add a tiny bit of black to it, a little bit more black and get it darker. Now, once you have that, so you're just going to take that blue you used, add some black to it, make it a little bit darker. Take a little tiny bit of that paint and just very little I'm just gonna go along the edge on the bottom left a little bit on the bottom right and maybe a few streaks down the middle and yeah just blend that in blend that in and then a little bit of a streak at the top so you can see just adding that little bit of dark can help give it I'm gonna add a little bit more shadow here um, that can really help give it more a more realistic look so okay so take a minute finish that off do all your blending for that and then we're going to do our final section for right now which is going to be the mountains
So for the mountains, um, what we're going to do is because we have these shapes, so what we're going to do is I'm going to create three different shades of uh, dark blues. We're going to keep with the blue palette. We're not going to go into browns for this. Um, so I'm going to create three different shades of a dark blue, starting with the darkest one. And then uh, we're just going to kind of, I'll show you guys, we're going to paint each kind of edge on the right side of each mountain in the shape. And then we'll go uh, lighter tone. I'm going to create my darkest color first. So I'm going to take equal parts of blue and black and mix those two in and then uh, white as well. So a little bit less white than the black and blue, but equal parts of black and blue. And it should give me a very dark blue and the white helps kind of mute it a little bit so it looks more grayish and that's good i'm good with that color and let's start painting so i'll give you guys a minute get that color together Okay, so now when I'm painting, what I want to do is I'm going to start at the right side, the edge of my mountain on the right side, and I'm going to do about a half or a third, but I'm going to do a little bit of a style here, you'll see in a second. So I'm going to create these kind of, these kind of streaks with my brush. So as I hold my brush, as I paint the left third of it, um, I'm going to just take the the narrow side of my brush and just create these kind of streaks and these lines uh, that can help us give us a unique kind of look and texture so you can see once again I'm gonna start on the right side of my mountains be, be careful with your edges uh, we're not painting the sky or the snow anymore so that's gonna be our final um, kind of edge so make sure that you do a good job and it's nice and clean and as I paint that in notice I just take my brush and just kind of create a little streak coming out. So I have these kind of little bands of that blue that come out of that kind of corner that I'm painting. So um, feel free to freestyle it. You don't have to do it exactly the way I'm doing it, but I just want us to practice a few different techniques and styles. So um, for this one, as you can see, I just kind of took my brush and then just created those streaks, created that contour line and then fill it in. For this one, because it's uh, being blocked by a tree, I'm just gonna fill in this shape in this corner with just that color. And then for the next one, same thing. Notice I'm just gonna start with the streaks this time, just kind of creating just these random lines really. And then once I have that, then I'm just gonna go ahead and just fill in the rest of it and once again really make sure that your edges um, are nice take your time make sure they're nice and clean and smooth okay so take a few minutes and let's do all the dark on all of our mountains there should be five of them so five dark shapes on our mountains Now that we're done that, we're gonna jump to our next color. So, I wanna just bring it, I wanna make it lighter and I wanna make it more blue. So I have a little bit of that left. I'm just gonna take the rest of my blue that I have on my palette. It's not too much, but it should be enough. And I'm gonna add a big, a, a nice blob of blue and a nice blob of white to that color. I wanna make it lighter and I wanna make it more blue. And it's always good, you wanna see how it looks, test it out, put a little dab right next to your color and just make sure it's noticeably different. I just did that, it's not, I wanna lighten it up, it was still too dark. Uh, so I just added another blob of white. And that's really the best way to mix your colors is, cause all paints are different. So really um, go a little bit at a time, test it out, see how it looks, put it on the page and then if you're happy with it, then you're good. So 
I have my color, I'm happy with it, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to um, kind of follow those lines that I made, follow those contours that I made with a darker blue with my new blue. And then once I, so I'll start with the right side, uh, once I have that, once I'm able to follow those lines, um, then I'm going to go to the left side, I'm going to kind of mimic the same thing, a little bit less dramatic on the left side, um, and just kind of create a little bit of that shape where I'm going to come in with an even lighter color after. So now we're doing our medium blues, I want you to go for all the mountains, uh, leave a little bit of white on the left bottom tips of each of them. I'm pretty careful now, I'm just going to try to follow that shape the contours of that shape that I just created with the dark blue and then just leave a little triangle at the bottom so take your time make sure once again that's nice and smooth and uh, this is where we're gonna really practice uh, precise brushwork so just try your best you can always go over that dark blue with your new color now but um, if you want to add more lines or more texture, but I'm just going to kind of follow what I created, what I kind of improvised, and then just fill in the rest of it once I have it. Remember, always feel free, you can move your hand, how you have your hand positioned on the paper, how the brush is positioned. You can also move your paper. My paper is taped down, but you can move your paper. Um, so yeah, take your time, take a few minutes, um, and just try to fill these in. For the left mountain, because I'm not going to see the very edge of it, I'm just going to fill all that in. And then the one that's behind the tree, we're just going to leave that tip. So, take a few minutes and finish that off. What I'm gonna do now for my next color is I'm gonna take that color I just used and I'm just gonna take the paint that's on my brush and I'm just gonna take a blob of white and just mix that in. So I had that blue on my brush that I just used, the medium blue. And I'm just gonna take a blob of white and just mix that whatever paints on my brush and that blob of white and basically what we're going for is a really uh, light blue kind of a little bit darker than our snow but um, noticeably lighter so we're just gonna paint that tip on each of the mountains and then I'm just gonna add a few little streaks to this is where you can you know be, be a little bit creative and do your own you can make yours a little bit more dramatic if you want or uh, by adding more of those streaks or those lines or you can just make it like a triangle solid shape so I'm good with that and basically all that's it's looking like right now is it just gives all those shapes some depth it looks like you know there's shadows and the on the edges of the mountains and there's snow on the bottom and things like that so that's what we're doing that so take a minute this part should be not too long there's only a few little sections that you want to fill in gonna add some snow to the top of these mountains so what we want to do is I'm gonna take my brush clean it and then I'm just gonna take some white paint so clean brush just a little bit of white paint very little we're doing the dry technique so I'm just gonna actually wipe it on my hands show you guys how little it is very little paint and then just dab 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 right along the top of the mountains just creating these slight little dabs. So once again, just pure white and very little, very little paint on your brush and then just little gentle dabs as you work your way across the top of the mountains. 
if if you're noticing you're getting blobs of color that's because you have too much paint on your brush so wipe your brush you want very little paint and then I'm just gonna work that in a little bit so uh, maybe I'm just gonna add a little bit more to some of these edges of the mountains yeah so it looks like um, the snow is kind of you know all over the mountain there you go some touch-ups there and just work it in just little tiny dabs you're creating texture you don't want to overdo it don't cover your entire mountain um, you just want to really do the tops and that's it and so take a few minutes and do that and this is where we're gonna stop for today by the end of this you should have your sky a beautiful gradient sky uh, our mountains with three different colors and also our snow and our river and what we're gonna do is now our midground and our background is completely done and all we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna add the tree so next week we're gonna paint the tree and we'll spend an entire uh, session on the tree and then we're gonna add some texture to this tree we're gonna add some snow to the tree and we're gonna add some uh, stars to our sky as well so we'll do all that next week I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much for being a part of this and see you all next week.